Good evening. This is Bell G. Elden. We are back with some more Skyrim VR, and we interrupt your regularly scheduled Maslea playthrough to bring you a mod that just recently came out. So what we're going to be showing off tonight is something that I think is really, really cool. There have been mods before it that have done similar things, but not nearly to the same level of polish as this mod has done. What we're going to be showing tonight is a ship mod, but not just any ship mod. Unlike the Ocean Saber, which you will be seeing or will have already seen in the Maslea playthrough, this ship moves. You can actually sail it. And best of all, it is designed primarily for VR users. Of course, if you're in non-VR, yeah, you're going to be able to use it as well, and you'll probably use it a little easier than those of us in VR. But the fact that the mod author specifically made it for use in VR is just above and beyond the call of duty. Yet, but there's still hope. Oh, Gita, you and your special someone. Mm. So, we're at home. In Elysium Estate, you can see Mabrel is there. You can see the Shrike sisters and Ginger's eating breakfast. Why is she having steak for breakfast? No clue. No clue. That's what Jordis cooked. That's what she's eating. So, yeah. All right. So, first things first. What we're going to need to do in order to get this boat is we're going to need to travel from Whiterun Hold to Solitude. And when we get to Solitude, we're going to go to the East Empire Trading Company to see if we can purchase this boat. So, with that having been said, we'll do the magic of editing to cut out a lot of the travel, and we'll make our way to Solitude. Ladies, are you ready? I sure as heck hope you're ready, because this is going to be an adventure. Let's go. Ah, another beautiful Skyrim morning. Yeah about that okay before we go anywhere let's do a quick save so you can see we got uh the airship there the deva beza parked over the house instead of back in Falkreath. and let me just save really quick i still can't believe it married to the dragonborn never would have guessed it um oh okay tanya can i can i do the quick save now please i'm gonna do the quick save all right, quick save is done, so we'll go ahead and open the gate. And everybody out. I'm going to close the gate after so the chickens don't get out, because otherwise we will find them halfway around White Run Hold. Come on, ladies. Out the gate. Out the gate. Close gate. Watch your butt. There you go. All right, um, just as a side note, I may be showing this off later in a different stream, or a different video, I mean. That's another house that I purchased. That's called White Run Safe Hold. And there is another White Run related house on the opposite side of White Run that I also got. So I ended up getting like three extra houses. Reason why I did that, there was another mod that I'm playing through called, uh, what's it called? Buxom Wench Uriana or something along those lines. I think that's what it's called, Buxom Wench Uriana. Needless to say, you will not be seeing that one on YouTube. That is not safe for work, shall we say. We're just going to leave it at that. Now, in this particular save game that we're going to be using to test out the boat, uh, this would have been before I managed to pick up any of the buxom wenches, so we won't need to worry about them crashing the show. But you may see off in a distance, like some little posters and stuff. Try not to look at them, because, uh, yeah, also not safe for work. Good morning, sir. I do. Where do you want to go? Uh, solitude, please. Climbing back and we'll be off. All right, sounds like a plan to me. Let's do it. You'd best hurry it up. I'm hurrying. Jeez, impatient. Have you ever met one of them cats? Haji, I think they call themselves. I hear there's whole countries full of them down south. Okay, so we made it safely to Solitude, and uh, yeah, you're going to see those little wanted posters all over the place. Those are also not safe for work, so try not to look. Hopefully I won't have to blur anything out, but you never know. You never know. 
All right, so we're just passing Catless Farm, and we're going to head down to where the uh, East Empire Trading Company is. Now, how you get this boat is you have to purchase it. So I'm going to show you exactly where I purchased it from and what it looks like once you get it, obviously, because we're going to need to sail in it. So we come down here to the docks. Now, you'll notice in my uh, playthrough, I've got a couple of extra ships. Like, that ship there will take us to Midwood Isle. I've decided after we're done with the Maslea series, I want to play through Midwood Isle because they've got some really cool lore and quests there. So we'll be using that boat to get there. That boat, of course, you take to get to Worm's Tooth, which is uh, probably one of the oldest uh, quest mods in Skyrim. Um... I have played through that, but I doubt I will be showing you a playthrough of that. Alright, so, this funky little boat here, this is actually our boat. This is it. You can see it's anchored and it's, you know, bobbing up and down on the waves, and we're going to have a heck of a time trying to get it out of this parking spot, because I don't think they anticipated the Midwood Isle boat being here. It should just be an easy thing of, you know, push forward and then hang to port and go through the arch and all that good jazz. But yeah, that's I not going to happen. It's open. Damn dragons could swoop down at any time. Yeah, well, I don't know how to tell you this, buddy, but I'm going on the ocean. So if you see any dragons, that's your problem now. All right. So the reason why I'm standing in front of this post right here attached to the post is going to be a little uh, poster or whatever you want to call it um, that invites you to purchase the ship. It costs 20,000 septim, so make sure you save up your money. But it is cheaper than a house, though. And once you purchase it, you have to wait 24 in-game hours before the ship will become available. But once you've uh, passed that mark, of course, you will see the ship right there. And it actually does have a marker, so you can teleport to it and you can find it easy. And when you get closer, it'll actually say, my ship. There we go, my ship discovered. There is no name given to this ship. Now, I don't know about you folks, but uh, it's considered unlucky to go to sea in a ship that is not named, so we're going to have to think of a name really quick for this one. I'm going to call it the Swift Runner because it is a pretty swift little ship. So this is now the Swift Runner. Okay, girls, now that we have a name for this ship, uh, let's see if we can get on board. The only thing I kind of don't like, which I'm hoping the mod author might address, or perhaps there's a reason as to why it's like this, for the port where the ship is, obviously you can't get on it like all the other ships around here you can see that the dock goes right up to the level of the ship so you can hop in but this actually goes into the water so in order for me to get on board I have to kind of do one of these numbers now that's fine for me not so fine for the girls because the girls are gonna run into the side of the boat and they're gonna have difficulty getting on board now they say in this mod that followers are not supported. However, if you look up the demo video for this mod, which I will link in the video description below, you will see that uh, the mod author does actually carry their followers with them. And I am also going to carry the girls with me. But since we know the girls are going to have a little bit of difficulty getting on board, sometimes they teleport to me and other times they just don't. What we're going to do is we're actually going to put them downstairs. So, you'll notice it says enter captain's cabin and there's a nice little trap door there. So we're going to go ahead and go in. Oh, hi, Allie. That was largely unexpected. Are your sisters going to do the same thing too? Or should we just head inside and teleport everyone in? They're just doing their own thing. All right, well, excuse me, please, because I'm going to bring you all into the cabin. All right, enter captain's cabin. Okay, welcome to the captain's cabin. As you can see, there's not much to it. First thing you need to know, this is the only interior cell for this ship. There is no forward section. This is it. Everything that you're looking at here, this is it. So this is the stairs or the ladder to get back out onto the deck. And we've got one bed, a single solitary bed. So Tanya and I will not be able to sleep together. 
thankfully I do have sleeping bags that I can put on the ground for the girls, so that might help. Got a little chest there. They do not recommend that you uh, store stuff in that chest because it, technically it's not a house, so you might not have the stuff there when you go back to get it. But I guess for short periods of time, if you're staying in room, that's probably not a problem. Everything that you see here is mostly decoration, but some stuff you can take, like the boots, the helmet, uh, I think the wine here. Oh, Tanya's gonna love that. She loves wine. Plus there's rum for me, so that's awesome too. And all these books you can take, with the exception of the one that's open, and this one right here, the most important book in this room. Study Naval Charts. What you need to do when you first get on board the ship, go ahead and click that. The screen will darken. And basically what it's doing is it's teaching you where all the route markers are on the map. So it says you are now an expert navigator and when you go back outside and pop open your world map, you're going to see markers to routes that will take you to other world spaces. The mod author was really clever in this. Not only can you go to places like Soul Sign, but you can also get to places like Midwood Isle or uh, Worm's Tooth or, you know, some other places. And he's looking to expand that with other mods that happen to have oceanic areas around it where it would be logical for you to actually get there from here. Pretty cool stuff. The other stuff is all decoration, so the coins, the model of the exact ship that we're on, the map there, and of course, my favorite part, the map of the whole planet of Nern, which is a lot bigger than I thought. You can see uh, the sunken kingdom of uh, Yokuda. You can see Tamriel in all its glory at the center of the map, kind of like how North America is on real world maps. Uh, Piandonia, Aldmeris, which I'm assuming is probably where the High Elves come from. I don't know much about Aldmeris. Akavir, of course, and at more all the way at the top there. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Maslea, incidentally, would be uh, those little groups of islands just under the uh, compass rows that you're seeing there to the right of Tamriel yeah that's pretty cool i love little touches like this that makes the whole thing worth it for me um just a quick note on the books they're random spawn so uh, whenever you first spawn in a ship you will see different books it could be any book that shows up there but i've noticed oftentimes you usually end up with some of the more rare books that you would find but yeah there you go all right, now we have a couple of options. We could either put the girls in here and they can just, you know, relax and they'll stay put. Or we can have the girls on the deck. The downside to keeping the girls on the deck, however, is whenever you reach the route marker, which basically allows you to teleport from one world space to the other, they unfortunately will disappear when you get to your destination world space. So it's better, I would recommend, that you actually keep any followers you have in this room. So, with that having been said, let's go ahead and grab the girls. I'm going to need leader's teleportation. There we go, leader's teleportation. And we'll go ahead and bring the girls in. And one thing I've noticed with this space, um, I don't know if it registers that it has light because automatically Gita and Ali have their torches out, which really shouldn't happen. But we're going to set all three of them to relax. There's not much that they're going to be able to do in here except maybe sit on a chair or sit on a table or maybe even sit on this crate here. So as you can see, Gita is already taken to the table and either Ali or Tanya are probably gonna hit the chair there in a moment. And then the other will probably sit on this crate. So the girls will be fine here. Oh, nice, Tanya, you take the bed. Okay, well, have at it. That's all I can really say. But yeah, the girls will be safe in here as long as Ali doesn't burn the place down with her torch, uh, everything should be fine. That is, by the way, a very nice touch, having uh, one of your companions sit on the table. <laughs> it would probably get annoying if I was sitting in the chair and she's just staring at me creepily. And Tanya's just having fun. I love it. I love it. All right, so 
Time to show you how to sail this sucker. All right, the first thing you're gonna notice is it tells you the wind heading and the wind speed. That is important because this is a sailing ship. Without wind, you ain't going anywhere. You know how sailing ships work. Well, the mod author did his homework on that and has certainly made it very realistic. So you're going to need to consider which direction the wind is blowing if you want to sail. Now, as far as the sails themselves, you can see that the sails are currently uh, furled. When we unfurl the sails, there's three settings. There's one third, two third, or full sail. That also influences your speed depending on how the wind is blowing. And if the wind is blowing too fast, you will automatically get bumped down to one third so that way you don't damage your sails and you know get into all kinds of problems all right let me show you the world map and the markers before we actually hit the wheel so to speak okay so this of course is the world map for skyrim to the south is the world map for cyrodiil which right now is only beyond skyrim bruma uh, you'll see the marker there for Solstheim. So Solstheim is off in that direction if you're going the conventional way. However, you also notice it says Solstheim route right here. So if we want to take this boat to Solstheim, we are going to literally have to come out of the harbor here in solitude, follow the red laser pointer there, go past all these icebergs until it looks like we're pretty much off the map we are not, by the way. You can notice that I'm still scrolling. All of this is a part of the map. It's just unused. And you see how far away from Skyrim we actually are. So you can, in theory, go past all the icebergs and then head out this way until you reach the Solstheim route. What will happen when you reach the marker for the Solstheim route? It will automatically teleport you to the edge of the Solstheim map. So that way you can continue traveling. Now, alternately, we do have the Worm's Tooth route, which does the same thing. You come out of solitude, you go up to this marker, and when you reach here, it will teleport you to the Worm's Tooth map. So then you can sail into the Worm's Tooth port. And also, we have the Azurian Sea route. Now, that will take us to Midwood Isle. So that's also pretty cool as well if we wanted to travel to Midwood Isle. I'm not going to show you Midwood Isle today because, well, let's face it, I want to do a whole series on that. Um, but I may show you Worm's Tooth. If you also look at the video link that I have from the mod author in the video description, he actually does sail this thing to Solstheim. So you can see a really funny, really cool video of him using this thing to get to Solstheim. But for our purposes, I'm thinking we should go to Worm's Tooth because I want to see what Worm's Tooth ends up looking like. So I'm going to put our marker here. And apologies for all of this crap up the top. I upgraded Beyond Skyrim Bruma and there's something funky going on with the uh, menu here in VR. They need to fix that. They need to hot fix that. Okay, but now that we know where we're going, let's see if I can do the reverse of parallel parking. That is trying to get the heck out of this thing. Now, how do you move this thing? That is the important question. There are two ways to do it. And I'm going to show you pretty much both. So these, of course, are your touch controllers, which in VR are your hands. Your left one, your left touch controller is typically what you use to move. That works on the boat as well. What you will do is you will put yourself on the helm. And once you're on the helm, it will, of course, uh, ring the bell to indicate, you know, that you're ready to move. And a number of uh, bell rings that you hear also has an impact too on you know how you're traveling but i'll explain all of that once we do that but once you're on the helm this touch controller no longer controls your character's movement it controls the boat's movement so going to the left will move your rudder to port going to the right will move your rudder to starboard and of course uh going forward will increase the amount of sail that you have unfurled Going backwards will decrease the amount of sail that you have unfurled. Plus, it'll also allow you to go in reverse if you go back far enough. Yeah, I know. This thing has a reverse on it. Alternately, 
if you are not on the helm, which I'm going to demonstrate that as well, you can use the number pad. Now, bear in mind, since we're in VR, we can't really see our keyboard. But if you happen to have an idea as to where your number pad is and you're close enough to your desk, you can use that while you are off the helm. So you can literally walk around the ship, make sure you're not going to hit an iceberg or, let's say, another ship. And you can use number pad 7 to move your rudder to the left or to port. Number pad 8 to center your rudder, so that way you'll go straight. Number pad 9 to move to starboard or to the right. And number pad plus will unfurl your sails in third increments. Number pad minus will furl your sails in third increments and then also allow you to go in reverse. So two different ways that you can control this sucker and both of them are worth it. But how do we actually get started? Well, I'm glad you asked. All you need to do is sneak. Okay. So, as you can see, it kind of moved us around here. We are now definitely connected, or we were definitely connected. Let's go ahead and sneak again. Alright, sails are active. And we are connected. It says anchors away. So that means the anchors are up. You'll notice the sail appears. Now it's not actually out yet. We will control that with our touch controllers. So we're going to need to go backwards. And I want to say we're probably going to want to turn the nose to port. So let me hit that. Three bells indicates that you are reversing. And let's just make sure that is true. It is. So it's going to be a slow going process. I am going to give us a little bit of rudder so that way our nose will start pointing in the opposite direction. And remember, wind does have an influence. Now, I believe there is a cheat that you can use that will allow you to disable the capability for wind to have an effect on your ship. Personally, I would rather keep it on because I think that's part of the fun of doing this whole sailing thing. All right, slowly but surely, we're making our way around. I'm going to straighten us up here. It's also important to note that with the keyboard, when you hit a uh, number pad left or number pad right, you do need to center it with number pad 8 afterwards because it's like a consistent rudder input thing. Whereas with the touch controllers, it's not like that. With the touch controllers, you hold it down in the direction that you want, and when you let it go, it automatically straightens the rudder. It's a little quirk that I found, but it's actually pretty intuitive, if you ask me. All right, I think that's about as far back as we can get before we uh, hit the gates to the East Empire Trading Company. Now, you may wonder, okay, well, we've got a pretty limited view here in VR. How do we compensate for that? Your right touch controller, which is what you use to look around, you can just do that. So now you can see we are about to hit the door. Now, if you have the mod VRIK, which is what causes you to have a body in VR, you're going to notice that your character generally will stay stuck in one particular position, which does kind of look weird, but, you know, it is what it is. So we're not going to complain too much about it. All right. So we're at raised sails, which basically means the ship is stopped. And we're going to push it forward. One third sail. And we're going to see if we can avoid this ship. I know I'm scraping the dock here, but hopefully I should be able to get through. Now, you may notice a little bit of stuttering. Why is that happening? That is because the FPS is dropping. They do recommend that you get at least 60 FPS in VR for this thing to go smoothly. It only seems to happen around the solitude area. So it's probably because I've got all this extra stuff going on here in solitude that's causing that. But you'll see once we get out to sea, it will be a heck of a lot smoother. And it's only in certain directions. If I look in certain directions, you'll notice it starts doing the stuttering thing so bear that in mind that is a thing and as soon as we pass this boat 
I will, of course, turn us a little bit more so that way we don't hit that one. It is definitely an exercise in patience to actually steer this puppy. But I'm very relieved to say that this thing feels so dang realistic. It's just incredible how this feels. I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, so we are going to continue making the turn. I don't want to go too, too fast because I have no idea where the rocks are. And we are looking for the blue marker, which apparently is off in that direction, due north. So we're going to need to get out to open water. And then we will see if we can head towards Worm's Tooth. I have not tried this before, so I have no idea what's going to happen. For all I know, it could just crash the entire thing. But we're about to find out together. All right, a little bit more turny-turny to the port. There we go. Right about there is good. And let's go ahead and open up the sails. Two-thirds sails. Full sails. Okay, so that should give us all the speed we need. And I'm just going to take one final look at solitude here. Always wanted to do this. Look at that. We're going right under the famous arch of solitude. In VR, no less. So you really, really get an idea just how large and majestic this thing actually is with the blue palace on top of it. That is so cool. Now, I know the mod author does plan on integrating other mods that have uh, oceanic areas. We talked briefly on Discord, or not on Discord, but on a Nexus about Maslea, because I would love to see Maslea added, but apparently there's some problems with Maslea's ocean area and lack of textures and so on. So it may or may not be possible for the mod author currently to hook it up so that Maslea can be sailed to from solitude so we'll still have to take the slave queen if that is the case but that's fine i'm not too worried about it all right so it looks like we are off to the races here so we can check the map at any point in time and see where we are so there you go and we can actually physically plot our course now so i'm thinking we go past this island here, past the Solitude Lighthouse, and I'm assuming there's probably not too many icebergs around here, so we might be able to hang a left and go through that area and then just head straight for the Worm's Tooth route. Failing that, the other option is we could go further out past these two icy islands, and hopefully there's no icebergs out here, and then we can go out that way. Incidentally, this is Dawnstar. This is the Ocean Saber. This is where I left it with its crew. And then, of course, we've got uh, Winterhold there. And we've got Windhelm there. So you can actually sail past the icebergs up this channel to get to the Windhelm docks, which is an amazing experience just trying to avoid the icebergs. We'll probably experience that on our way here. Okay, so, since we are pretty much on autopilot, so to speak, uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you what happens when you get off the helm here. So, again, we're going to use the sneak command, which on the right touch controller is the thumbstick down. And you can see it just basically pushes you off. So now, the ship is basically tracking the same direction that we told it to track, and we can move around the deck. Be very careful with this. With this ship, you do have the capability of doing shortcuts. You can go at two times speed or three times speed. Don't forget, this thing responds to the wind. If the wind is blowing too fast and your ship is moving too fast, you can end up slipping and sliding all over the place and potentially fall off the ship. If that happens, the ship is programmed to basically drop anchor. So that way, you know, you've not lost your ship permanently. And also, don't forget, you can teleport to the ship. 
If you're doing it on water, however, be advised if you do teleport to the ship while it is out in the middle of the ocean or something, you're probably going to end up in the water. Good luck trying to get on the ship then. All right, so there we have, what is that, the start of the pale, I believe. There's the lighthouse. Okay, so we're going to want to make a left shortly. So I'm going to get back on the helm because honestly, it just feels more natural being on the helm. So we'll stand in front of it and then sneak. And you'll see that puts us back on the helm. And now all of a sudden, my touch controller once again functions as our steering. There's a shipwreck over there. There's a Draugr crypt or something over there. We need to be pointed off in that direction. I'm not so sure how this is going to work because unfortunately, once you get out of the landmass area of Skyrim, you've got no point of reference on the map, like at all. So just try to avoid the rocks. That's all I can really say. Try to avoid the rocks. But let's not forget, folks, we are the Dragonborn, which means if we are ever in doubt, we can always use the Clear Skies Shout, and that will help us out. Now, it's probably not going to change the winds much. The winds are still going to be whatever they are set to, and they do vary from time to time. However, at least you'll be able to see any icebergs before you actually hit them. You cannot sink with this thing. However, the prow of the ship does have collision, so it will stop you if you hit an iceberg. And depending on what the wind conditions are like, you may end up stuck. So just be mindful, like any good sailor, any good navigator, you're going to want to chart your course through these open waters here and try to figure out the best way to get from point A to point B. The time of day also determines what the winds do. Typically during the daytime, the winds are blowing from west to east. So we're kind of crosswind right now. So we're not really going too fast, even though I have the sails at full. Let me get off the helm here. But if we were to turn to the right or to starboard a little bit, then we may actually get back some of that lost speed. But there you go. There's a look at Solitude's lighthouse that you've never seen before usually the only time you go there is for the one quest and it's of course from land but that's what it looks like when you're on an ocean going vessel and there's that one ship that has the pirates and stuff that you've got to go to again on that one quest as i like to say um, the Cataraya, I'm not sure where the Cataraya is or if it's even spawned in because I have not done the Dark Brotherhood quest. I typically don't. I've played through the Dark Brotherhood a number of times. Honestly, I'm just tired of it. Usually, if I'm doing a playthrough that doesn't involve them, I'll just end up killing all of the Dark Brotherhood. I've showed that on video before, too. All right. Yeah, we are definitely losing a lot of speed. But you can see we've got ice packs right there. Now it will take us a little while to get to the area that I want to show you where we teleport into Worm's Tooth. So of course I may cut the video here and there. You'll see a little pop up at the bottom there to indicate what exactly it is I'm doing. But we do have ice directly ahead of us. So I want to do something about that before anything else happens. And look at Solitude. Just take a moment and take that in. And then imagine it from my point of view in VR. Wow. It is truly majestic. I kind of wish the girls could see this, but the girls are indoors. And that's another important point to make. When you are underway, you cannot get into the captain's cabin. You have to stop and drop the anchor before you will be allowed into the captain's cabin so keep that in mind as well you can however keep your followers out here if you're able to get them on the deck and they will pretty much stay in position they may drift a little bit depending on how fast the boat is going and you know your fps and all that stuff you may find them drifting to one side or the other depending on how the boat is listing but it shouldn't be too critical an issue 
All right, uh, we're gonna move out a little to the left here because I'm pretty sure there's an iceberg ahead of me. Yeah, we're barely getting any speed because of the fact that we're crosswind right now. We really should be heading more off in that direction to the east. And there are going to be more icebergs there. Okay. Now, if it gets like this and you find yourself struggling, you can always reef your sails. Now, what that involves is basically putting your sails down to one-third. So you heard the bell go twice. So it went from full to two-thirds and then two-thirds to one-thirds, which is where we're at right now. It's really not going to make you much faster, but um, it may help as far as uh, getting through crosswind type situations. In this instance, it looks like we may have hit a little bit of a doldrum, so we're not really moving all that much. We're just slowly crawling. So I might actually give us more sails. At least till we get around here, and then I'll kind of turn us a little more to the starboard or to the right. And that should build up our speed. I just want to make sure that I'm avoiding these ice packs right there. But yeah, look at that. Skyrim as you've never seen before. And don't get me wrong, because I have the Deva Vesa, the Deva Vesa is still my top way to travel. However, even though I can fly all over Skyrim or any other place that I have a beacon down and can teleport the ship to, I can't do what I can do with this. I can't manually fly the Deva Vesa from Skyrim to, say, Wormstooth. What you're seeing in this video is me manually sailing this ship from one world space to another. That is unheard of. And that is so incredible. And that's what makes this mod, in my opinion, worthy to show you. Plus the fact that it's being done in VR. All right, we should pick up some of that lost speed. I'm gonna swing us just to the right of that iceberg here. As you can imagine, the sea of ghosts. Yep, icebergs are a real thing. <laughs> Now, let's talk a little bit about combat. Yes, if you have your followers on board, and let's say a dragon happens to be out at sea and tries to attack you, the dragon cannot destroy your ship. However, the dragon will try to fight you because that's just how dragons roll. And yes, your followers and yourself can fight them, but you gotta make sure that you are off the helm. You cannot get into combat while you are on the helm but your followers can protect you. So that's a good thing, that's a plus. Slaughterfish, I haven't really had to worry about while I'm on the helm here. Oh, winds just changed. Southwest. Okay, it looks like it's going in our favor though, which is good, because we're starting to move a little faster. So let's give her full sails. Ah, oh, much better, look at that. Look at that, that is awesome. Okay, now we're really booking. But yeah, as I started to say, uh, slaughterfish, I haven't noticed an issue with slaughterfish. None have tried to attack me while I'm on the boat, while I'm on the helm. Where it becomes a problem, of course, is once you get off and once the boat has stopped, then it's open season on Bellinos. And I think I need to swing out a little bit to the right here. Yeah, that definitely looks like shallows. Oh boy, there's a lot of shallows around here. Holy crap, there's a whole rock under there. Look at that. Okay. I have never navigated this way before. Uh, there's Volkahar Castle over there. You can see it off in the distance there. I kind of want to do the clear skies just so I can see better, but I think, honestly, this is more immersive, having the haze, the fog, and a little bit of snow coming in. I think this is more the feel that I'm looking for traveling the Sea of Ghosts, so we're going to leave it like this for a little while here. But yeah, there's all these little islands that Bethesda hasn't put anything on. There's no loot, there's no enemies or anything like that. They're just there for decoration, basically. 
we never get to see this because roughly about one third of the map of Skyrim it's just this it's just unused space just water sitting there which is kind of wild when you think about it all right let's see how close we are to the point okay so thankfully we've got our little beam of light that indicates where we are so we are roughly where are we right there and we're heading in the correct direction to our destination there what's going to happen is once we have discovered the worm's tooth route marker it will of course go visible like it always does and then it will teleport us once we get within a certain range i don't know exactly what the range is but um, we'll find out soon enough but as you can see we're right there and it looks like I'm going to need to turn a little to the left or a little to port. Yep, definitely going to need to turn to port. Okay, so let's do this. Let's go around these little islands here because it doesn't look like there's any ice packs nearby. It looks like all the ice is on that side or over in that direction towards uh, Winterhold, which you can barely see the College of Winterhold right above my index finger there. There should be a statue of Azura just to the right of that, but I definitely can't see that from here. Wow, this is just so awesome. I know for some people this might be boring as all get out, but let me tell you, for someone like myself, I've always had a love affair with aircraft and boats. And since I have the Deva Vesa, well, that scratches the aircraft itch for Skyrim, and it stays lore friendly because aircraft, or like the airship, do actually exist in Skyrim lore. You can look it up. Airships are a thing in Skyrim lore. So the Deva Vesa, 100% lore friendly. And then, of course, you have ships like this, which is fairly obvious that obviously it is very lore friendly. You see these ships all the freaking time. Now, I know that the mod author does have additional plans. Uh, since this is a labor of love, I'm not sure how much time they'll actually have to pull off some of the additional plans that they have. But one of the things that they were talking about is the potential of having NPC ships doing automatic routes around Skyrim and the various places. So picture this, piracy. You could have pirate ships potentially attacking you, or you could be the pirate attacking merchant ships. Kind of like, you know, what we did, spoiler alert, in the Maslea playthrough which you probably won't see that until the very last video of the Maslea playthrough, since I'm planning on uploading this video really, really soon. But I will be showing that off to you, and it's kind of cool to see. But yeah, I see the potential for stuff like that with this mod right here as the basis for it. And it is an awesome thing to think about. Now, the other thing that I would love to see which the mod author did admit that it's going to take a lot of integration between mod authors and their respective mods. I would love to see more than just this ship. Picture the Ocean Saber or its sister ship, the original ship, the Sea Dragon, or the Vampire version. I forget what that's called, the Red Shadow or something like that. Or even better, the Scarlet, which is a buildable ship. It is massive. But can you imagine ships like those, all of which you can find on a Nexus, with this kind of motion built into it, where you can actually steer the ship? That's what Skyrim has been missing. Let me come off the wheel here. And like I've said before, yeah, there have been mods before that have done similar stuff to this you know maybe they've pretended that uh, your ship is a horse and you basically just ride the ship on the water this is a completely different system and even though it is admittedly very script heavy you can see i haven't had a whole hell of a lot of stutters here in vr the only time that we had an issue was around solitude and i expect we'd probably have the same around windhelm but other than that this thing is really smooth it does exactly what it says on the tin. It gives you an immersive sailing experience. All right, now it's gonna take us a little while longer to get to the teleport point. So at this point in time, I am going to pause the video. And when we pick it up, it should be just before we are ready to teleport. So 
I will see you, uh, seafaring dogs, in a moment. Alrighty, folks, welcome back. It's been probably about 15 or 20 minutes real time later. So, yeah, it's it's been a haul. It has been a haul. We still have not yet seen the marker that we're looking for that's going to teleport to us, but I have a funny feeling that it is coming up really, really soon, and we are getting some decent speed. So I'm going to basically pick up the video recording from here. As you can see, there is Skyrim way off in the distance. In fact, it's getting so far that uh, most of the mountains are starting to just disappear. You can still see the throat of the world, though, up there with High Hrothgar and all of that. And if you look off in that direction, you can see the College of Winterhold right above my hand. So yeah, cool beans. Cool beans. Okay, his marker is there, and here we go. All right, so here we are. We are now in the Worm's Tooth space. Worm's Tooth tends to have a completely different weather setting, so yeah, it's kind of weird, it's kind of gloomy looking in a way. And I may need to use that uh, clear skies thing. But you'll notice that the music has now changed, so we're now listening to the Worm's Tooth music. And I want to say the island's off in the distance there, but we're going to check the map really quick. The first thing you're going to notice is after we have teleported, the ship stops and it takes you off of the thing. So it's not a very smooth transition in that you start out moving and you continue moving. But I kind of like this because it gives you time to do stuff like perhaps check your winds, southwest at five zero degrees, one something meters per second, and it allows you to do a quick save. Okay, quick save is done. Let's check the map really quick before we start moving. All right, so you can see we are now on the Worm's Tooth map, and we are, I'm assuming, south of Worm's Tooth. So here is the Imperial Docks. Uh, this is Fort Vallis. Fort Vallis is a castle that I own. And... We also have the Imperial Camp here, the Abandoned Lighthouse, which is really not going to help us as far as coming in. Um, in the interest of time, since I know this video is getting a little long in tooth, I would say we should probably just take the ship straight to the Imperial Camp, and from there we can make landfall. So, instead of going to the full docks that are there, we're just going to go here. So we'll go place marker. And that'll give us a point on the compass to aim for, and you can see where it actually put us on the edge of the map there. So it's not completely at the edge, but it's close enough. It's close enough. All right, so uh, we need to be headed off in that direction. So let's uh, let's get on the ship. Actually, you know what? Let's check the girls first, make sure they're all okay. Girls, you okay? You Tanya? Can do whatever you want with me. Oh, dear Lord, don't start with me, Gita. Don't start with me. This is a family-friendly yes. show. Family-friendly, yes, Gita. What do you need? I'm just checking on you all. And tell your sister stop being so frisky. Sheesh. Ugh. We've got rum. We've got wine. So Tanya's good. Gita's good. Ali's good. Just chill in there. Why aren't you reading a book? You're always reading a book. You know what? Never mind. All right, so now that we know that the girls are safe and sound, we're going to head back to the deck. I guess I should have probably told you all, we are in Worm's Tooth area. We should make landfall in probably about 20 or so minutes. Okay, so southwest, five zero degrees are winds. Let's get back on board. <clears throat> oh, did it wrong. You got to activate set sails first. And that will put you where you need to be. Anchors away, which means the anchors are up. And let's go ahead and get some speed. One bell, one third sail, two bell, two third sail, third bell, full speed. And we're gonna point us towards starboard, so that way we are headed straight for Worm's Tooth. want my blue marker to line up right about there is good and as promised we're going to clear the skies 
shouts. I can't see crap here. Usually takes me two shouts to do it. First one is just a warning shout, I guess. Oh, look, you can see the moon. Secunda. And we'll wait till my shout refreshes. Thankfully, this is one of those shorter shouts. And that should clear the skies. And there you go. Voila. The Isle of Worm's Tooth. Like I said, this is one of the oldest mods for Skyrim. It is so awesome. If you've never played through it, I would highly recommend you get Worm's Tooth and at least play through the main quest. It's just so awesome. This one is the one that pretty much set the paradigm on what good quest location mods should be. There's so much that you can do on this island, and it's so cool, all of it. <clears throat> all right, uh, I think I see Fort Vallis, which is ultimately our final destination. But we're just gonna keep heading this direction because it should take us directly to the Imperial camp. I don't believe there are docks there, but I should be able to pull the boat up to shore and get off a little bit easier, so that way we'll also be able to get the girls off the boat as well. And it looks like it's just about sunset. You can see the sun right there. Getting ready to set. Let's come off the wheel here. And we can start getting a good look at Worm's Tooth Island. Look at that. This is what it's all about, people. This is exactly what it's all about. This is the thing that Skyrim has been missing forever. Especially with all these mods that add these new lands that are surrounded by water. This is perfect. It's the best way to bridge the gap between the base game and everything else that has come out after. Like I said, I would love to see Maslea have it. I realize that the mod author is having issues with Maslea, but, you know, it is what it is. Hopefully they'll be able to get it sorted out. <clears throat> that marker that you're seeing there, that's from our map. So if we were to go to the map, you will see two of those markers. See, there's the one that indicated where we started. And this is, of course, where we are now. And looks like we are drifting a little to the left, which is interesting. I didn't know you could drift in this. Okay, well, now I know. All right, let's get back on the wheel here. Yeah, sure enough, we are drifting. Holy crap. I learned something new today. Full sails. So yeah, there is Fort Vallis. That is technically my player home on Wormstooth. It is a massive fort and you do get NPCs to help you defend it. You've even got like a little port collar that you can open and close as well as a booby trap, like fire jets that will uh, spit out fire on anybody who tries to come in. You have to manually activate it though. It's a pretty cool place. So that's where we're gonna end up for the end of this video. As a matter of fact, I see an Imperial boat there. At least I think that's an Imperial boat. I'm not 100% sir. We'll find out in a moment. When we get closer to shore, I will of course slow us down somewhat. We'll grab the girls and we'll head up to Fort Vallis or Vallis and we'll call this episode done. So I really hope you've enjoyed this. I had to show this to you. Initially, I was thinking, you know what, I will put this at the end of the Maslea series, but since it doesn't work with Maslea right now, and honestly, the Maslea series is not going to end until mid-November, kind of didn't make sense for me to sit on this, especially since it just recently came out. I really wanted you to see this ship because this is one of the best experiences that I've had so far in Skyrim, in VR. Deva Vesa notwithstanding. This is just amazing. And I'm thinking what we will do once we finish with the Maslea series and get started on Midwood Island, we will use this ship to get to Midwood Isle. All right, looks like there's a whole bunch of ice over there, so I'm not so sure this is a good place for us to park the ship. 
And there may be bandits over on that side, so um, let's slow ourselves down here. Yeah, there's all kinds of weird stuff here. Let's see if we can go in reverse. See so if we have enough wind to go in reverse. Doubt it. What I'd like to do is set us up over at those docks there, but I have a funny feeling there's going to be bandits there. All right, come on, reverse, Betsy. Or, excuse me, we, we decided to call this thing Swift Runner. Yeah, we're not getting any motion out of this thing. We may have to just beach it right here and contend with the uh, Horkers. But I'm trying to get us backward enough so that I can turn us in that direction and see if there's any place that we can pull up there that'll make the girls' lives a little easier to get off the boat. Invariably, we're probably going to go up against pirates. So, you know what? I'm going to take this time to set myself up for... Fire Breath. There it is. Are we even moving? I think we are. Barely, though. Barely. What happens if I... Okay, the rudder is working, so we are moving. I'm going to turn us a little bit this way. And that's the other thing I love about the Worm's Tooth map. On a clear day, you still have clouds right on the water. So it's like the fog starts rolling in in the evening. It makes for a really pretty picture, as you can see there. I'm going to try not to hit this ice flow. Little floating tiny ice won't affect it. The big ones, we can get stuck on it. So I'd rather not have that happen. All right, let's go one third sails. And we're going to turn to the port or to the left. Now I could come off the helm, go to the front of the ship and just use a keyboard, but I'm just having so much fun doing this manually here. And it just so happens that where they place you, where my hands normally sit on my legs or on the office chair, it almost looks like I'm holding the wheel, which is even better. It's that extra added immersion, you know? All right, but we are going in the wrong direction as far as the winds are blowing so that may be a little bit of a problem and that of course will make this video a little bit longer but there's the abandoned lighthouse i don't know of any mods to bring that back to life and i don't think as a player you can bring that back to life but in light of the fact that we've got this ship mod here that would be a neat thing to have is that lighthouse so that we know where we can pull in when we want to come visit fort bayless all right, let's give her some more sail power, and we're going to see if we can make our way over there. I see smoke there, so I'm pretty sure that's probably a bandit camp. Probably. I'd be willing to bet money that's a bandit camp. All right, so we're going to go to the right here to starboard. Look at the sun glinting off that water. That is amazing. I'm telling you, folks, if you've never played through Worm's Tooth, get this mod. Make sure you use clear skies on it so you can have sunsets like this. Oh, that is a defunct ship. Well, that was largely unexpected. Uh, can I bring myself into this dock? Or is that going to be an issue as well? Not 100% sure. All right, let's start slowing down here before we run aground. Okay, one third sail. You know what, even if it is a bandit camp, I'm gonna pull up right next to this boat. And that'll be our way on and off the ship. I'll just have to remember to back out of our parking spot, so to speak.
And we're about to hit the boat, which is fine, because I'm going to use that as my ramp. Whoa, yep, 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 we're going right through the boat. Okay. Raise sails, raise sails. Matter of fact, go in reverse, please. Because now I've got two boats inside of me here. Which is not ideal. It is not ideal. The collision is only on the prow. It is not on the rest of the ship. Now, I don't know if that's necessarily a good idea, but you know what? At least we're not going to sink because we have a rowboat in between us here. So I'm all right with that. I'm okay with that. I'm just going to pull us a little to the right next to this dock here. And that should be good enough. We are probably aground. But that's fine. That should do. Ship anchored. Yep, we're definitely aground. But you know what? I am okay with this. I am okay with this, because Fort Bayless is right there. We just need the girls. Uh, let's see. The best way to get the girls up here is just to simply teleport them. So now that I know there are no enemies here, we will set the leader's teleportation and go... Hi, girls. <laughs> Look at Gita. All right, let's go. thought I saw some money bags over here. I will take that. Thank you very much. It's almost like they knew we were coming. But there you go. The Swift Runner can rest here tonight. And it is anchored into the ground. So nothing's going to happen with it. No bandits are going to steal it or anything like that. And we are perfectly safe and sound. So we're going to head up the hill to Fort Vallis. It's going to take us a little while to get up there. So I will cut the video at this point. And when we come back, we will be ready to sign off on this video. All right, we finally made it to Fort Vallis, and it looks like we were followed. So, girls, grab your weapons. There is a flame atronach. Why is there a flame atronach? Now there is a dead flame atronach. That guy is one of my guards, and clearly he is not the brightest bulb in the box. Why did you do that, sir? Why did you do that? Continue your patrol, though. All right, so this is our final destination for the day. Fort Vallis, or Fort Bayless. Um, Tanya, you coming? I would kind of like you to be in here before I close the gate. You think you can make that happen? Thank you, I'd appreciate it. Gate closing. See, that would have gone straight up your butt if you would have been standing a little bit further back. All right. But I don't know if we can see the ship from here. I want to say maybe if we go to the back, that would be a good way to close out this video. Hello, boys and girls. I want to see if I can see my ship, so that way we'll have like a nice little cinematic thing, and then we can also do a title shot for the video. But yeah, there it is. Look at that. There's the Swift Runner. And that is where I'm going to leave it, folks. So, thank you as always for watching. This has been Bell Geode. I have been playing Skyrim VR. This particular video has just been a review, if you will, of the ship mod that is linked in the video description below, which allows you to sail this ship in VR and, of course, in regular Skyrim SE. But the big thing is you can manually sail it from world space to world space. And it supports multiple mods with a lot more coming soon. Mod author does plan on having it integrate with other types of vanilla ships. Hopefully, we can get some of the other mod authors in on this and get ships like the Ocean Saber, the Scarlet, uh, the Sea Dragon, the Red uh, Shadow all of those ships compatible with this, that would be awesome to be able to take those player home ships with you. I would love to see it happen. And I think this mod is the tip of the iceberg and is one of the reasons why I immediately endorsed it, gave it a thumbs up, and also voted for it for mod of the month. 
I would highly recommend if you're in VR, and even if you're not in VR, go ahead and download this thing. The link's in the video description below. Check it out. Make sure you read the instructions thoroughly. It's so worth it, as I hope you've seen. Alrighty, folks, that'll do it for me. So if you enjoy what you've seen, please feel free to give me a like, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. And we now return you to your regularly scheduled Maslea playthrough. Alrighty, folks. Belgiode and the Shrike sisters, Alianis, Tanya, and Gita, signing out. Ciao!